Just kidding. This isn't Sunday school. This is junior church. We don't need that. All right. Well, good morning. Uh, happy Sunday morning. So we are going to be looking at 2 Kings chapter 6 for your little challenge this morning. And I hope it's a blessing to you. Uh, but let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. And I pray for these kids that you'd help them see just how big you are, how powerful you are, how much you care in this little story of scripture. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so as we look in our Bibles, we see God do some really big, cool things. Stuff that people even made movies about because they're so awesome. Like, think of the parting of the Red Sea. Think of um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and the fiery furnace and God saving them and God does big things to save the Israelites. He provides manna. He provides a huge cloud by day and a, a pillar of fire by night. God just does huge, amazing, big things. And last week we saw uh, Jonathan and his armor bearer survive going against a Philistine fort. You know, I still have the sword over here. Battling against them and God protecting them and God doing a really cool thing with them. But God also cares about the little things in life. God cares about things that we wouldn't necessarily put a big emphasis on, a big deal about. Um, and here in 2 Kings chapter 6, we see a miracle, but it's not a miracle that we would think that God would do because we understand that God does huge, big things in, in stuff that stories that you've heard before, but God also does things for people that we may think is just, that's not that important. That's just tiny. Why would God bother to do that? So we're going to look about a story that talks about how God does big things uh, for, for little reasons, I guess. So Elisha is a prophet of God. He's a, he's a guy that when God says go over there or preach a certain thing, that he does it. And he's going on to a place called the Jordan River because he needs wood. Him and the men he's with need wood. And there's not wood in their area, but down by the Jordan River, there's some wood. So, seems like a simple enough thing. They need wood to build these basically meeting places. So that's pretty straightforward. Then we get to the text. It's 2 Kings chapter 6. So go ahead and look at verse 2. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, so a plank of wood, because they needed to build these buildings. And let us make us a place there, wherein we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. So Elisha's like, You got my permission, go ahead and go. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So one guy's like, Hey, hey, more the merrier. It'd be really nice if you came with Elijah. Eli sorry, Elisha. I'm not going to get those confused again. Elisha. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down wood. So a group of guys are there, and they just start cutting down the wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And isn't that just like the worst feeling when you borrow something and then it breaks? And you're like, oh no, how can I, I have to go talk to that person that I borrowed it from. And it's interesting that this guy is not named in scripture. We don't have a name for him. And I don't know if I would want my name in scripture if it was solely about the situation where I lost something or something broke and I was responsible for it. But uh, you know how, especially in water, if you've ever gone out on a boat, maybe fishing, and you've lost something in the water, a lot of times you watch videos of people that drop their phone in the water, or like a couple that are on a bridge, and it's like, oh, he's going to bow the knee and ask for her hand in marriage, and he gets on one knee, and he's trying to get the ring out of his pocket, and maybe it's a little difficult, and he gets out the ring, and he drops it, and it goes right in the water, and it's like, <gasps> and that happens all the time, and you can actually find videos of that. So in this case, though, it's it's kind of a worse, because axe, axes and axe heads were not... Um, not so easy to come by. There wasn't like Menards down the street where they could go, oh, I'll just go buy another one. Uh, they were actually very valuable and highly sought after. 
So this is a big problem for this one individual. Okay, on the grand scheme of things, in terms of the universe and our world, we wouldn't say this is that big of a deal, but to this one guy, it's a big deal. Okay, so what happens? He's, he's freaking out, he doesn't know what to do, and Elisha steps in as a prophet of God. Verse six, and the man of God, that's Elisha, said, where fell it? Where, where did it drop in? And he showed him the place. And he, Elisha, uh, cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Now, it doesn't mean swim like blah, 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 and it grew arms and legs and started swimming to the top, but it means that it floated to the top. The iron head that weighs a lot started floating to the top of the water. Now, that is a miracle. That is something that does not normally happen, okay? And I love this next verse. And it says, therefore, he said, take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and he took it. So <laughs> I just, I picture this scene where the guy is so in shock, you know, that he sees the accident now floating at the top of the water and it's just, but it, yeah. And Elisha's like, you going to grab it? Go, go take it. And you must have just, I just pictured the scene, the guy just, holding the axe, like, no, it really is heavy, and <laughs> it's a miracle. So I, I just love the scene, and that's kind of the story. You know, after that verse, it moves on to other things in that chapter. So what can we learn from this story of this axe head floating up, and this guy able to fix the axe and probably just go straight back to work? Well, first, God cares about the little things in life. God cares about the little things in life. We read in the New Testament that God even knows how many hairs are on your head and my head, and God even knows how many white hairs are in my head that are hopefully hidden with the glare of the window. But uh, God cares about the little things. And we, we see that also in the New Testament when it, when it says that God provides food for the sparrows. Okay, And we read other stories of God, um, Jesus healing, uh, the widow's son, uh, the widow of Nain, and all those other stories where God cared about people, even these little situations amongst all the other stuff going on. So God cares about the little things in life. Number two, sometimes we mess up even when we're trying to do the right thing. So this guy is chopping wood for a good cause. He's hacking at this tree and he's trying to help build this building that where they can do good things. But even then... He made a mistake. Uh, it fell apart. It, it wasn't like he wanted it to happen. But sometimes we want to do good things. And sometimes we want to help out the church. And sometimes things fail and things don't go well. And that's just part of life when we got to accept it and kind of move on. Number three, we should be sensitive like this guy in scripture with the stuff that we borrow. You know, a, a lot of people aren't like this guy in scripture. Okay, A lot of people, I think, in this situation would have maybe walked away and acted like they were doing something else and maybe never talked to that guy that they borrowed the axe from. So there you've already lost a relationship with someone. A lot of people would have maybe blamed that guy. Well, it's your fault. You should have had a... a a better brand of axe. It should have been Fiskars or whatever. You know, he could have... It's weird how people can be, but sometimes they want to blame that other person like it's their fault. But it's still their responsibility. It broke while they were using it. Okay, So we need to be sensitive just like this guy. It's a good thing that he's so um, concerned about the axe head. So, and remember that not giving something back that you borrowed is stealing. Okay, and stealing is uh, mentioned in scripture as, as a sin. It, it's right there even in the Ten Commandments of all places that God put that much priority on it. Thou shalt not, you know it, steal. Okay? Ephesians 4.28 says about people that are now believers, it's like, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to others. So as a believer in Christ, we need to focus on working so we can help other people. And obviously, probably in your head, Pastor Dan, what about the parable of the lost coin or the sheep? Yep, those are also cases 
about things being lost. All right, but we should have this sensitivity with the things that we borrow uh, from people. And a lot of times, as kids, it's stuff that it's our parents, that our parents own the thing that we're using, that you never bought it. It's like, okay, you're not old enough to have a job. So uh, we have to be careful with the things that our parents let us use and listen to them very carefully how to use those things. All right. Uh, lastly, um, God doesn't always help us find every single thing that we've lost. Okay. Sometimes he does, but not all the time. But God understands loss because God lost his son on the cross that he understands that pain. So think about that. That's what the whole gospel is all about. Um, God sending his own son to die for our sins and our failures so we can be in that right relationship with him. So those are my four points. God cares about the little things in life, not just the big, huge miracles. God cares about the little things, about that one person who has a problem. Sometimes we mess up even doing good things and we have to keep going and press on. Number three, we should be really sensitive like this guy. If we have something that we have borrowed and it breaks or we lose it, we need to own up to it and go to that person and admit our faults. Uh, number four, God understands uh, the pain of losing something. So it's not like God's super far away and doesn't understand what we go through. No, he does. Okay. All right. So let's close in prayer for this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, help us when we lose things that maybe we've borrowed. Lord, help us admit that we've done wrong to people that that maybe wasn't intentional, but still it's, it's our fault. Lord, help us, Lord, when... Um, we lose things. Lord, thank you for helping us when we actually do find those things that we, we've lost that maybe it took minutes, maybe it took hours, maybe days. But Lord, thank you for thinking of us. And Lord, so often you want to see endurance and patience by us as we look for things. But Lord, I pray that you'd work in these kids' lives. Um, help us be more Christ-like. We see Christ was loving and caring and sharing. Lord, help us uh, focus on that. Lord, help us work and seek to do good things to others that, that we may be like the, the man in Ephesians 4.28 that, that gives to others. So, Lord, help us have a giving spirit. And, uh, Lord, I pray for this lesson that it would stick in the minds of these kids. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. You guys have a great Sunday. All right. Take care.